Lot of companies use forecasting model to predict their future sales, revenues, or profits. Well, this helps them to plan for their resources, cost that is needed to achieve optimal return in their investment. So what is forecasting? Well, forecasting means using a statistical model to generate prediction for future data based on historical information. Or we can also say that forecasting is a technique that uses historical data as input to make informed estimates that are predictive in determining the nature or the direction of future trends. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use forecasting functionality in Tableau to predict the future data using historical information. So having said that, let's get started. Welcome back, this is Gurpreet from Dataverse Canvas and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use forecasting functionality in Tableau to predict for future data based on historical information. So first of all, I want to show you the different ways to forecast in Tableau. So basically, there are two ways to do forecasting in Tableau. So the first one is a basic approach which is available as a part of Tableau analytics function. And the second one is more complex approach that requires additional forecasting tools like R or Python. So in today's tutorial, I'll be focusing on the basic forecasting model provided by Tableau. It's very e easy to build a forecast in Tableau, though there are some constraints which I will cover at the end of this session. So all we need in, in order to create a forecast is a date or a time, time series and a measure value. It can be any measure you want to forecast. So in this tutorial, I'm going to use sample Superstore data set and we are going to show or we are going to predict the sales value over a period of time. So let's get started. So I will create a new worksheet and I have already connected to sample Superstore data set. So as I mentioned, we need the first thing is the time series or the date. And in this case, I'm going to use order date. So I will simply drag it and bring it to column shell. And I want to show the time series by month and year, right? So I will just expand that hierarchy and will show all the month years. You can do it this way, or if I go back few steps, I can go here and I can select month year from in this way as well. Uh, this is a continuous, so that's why it's looking like this. Or you can simply go into discrete values and you can select month years from here as well as a discrete value. And I want to show the sales over a period of time. So I will just double click on that one and you will see the sales. And I want to show it as a line chart. So I can do it like this. And as you can see here, we are showing the sales from Jan 2018 to December 2021. So that's just creating a line chart for sales over a period of time. So now what we need to do is we simply go to analytics tab and bring out forecast value. So if I go here and you will see forecast, just drag it on the top of the view and click here. And automatically it will create a view. The view will have both the forecast value, which you see in this light blue line and a prediction interval, which is the shaded band by default. So this is automatically using the automatic selection of the model. But there are some things we as a user can adjust. If we want to customize the default forecast, we can simply right click on the view and select forecast. So on the forecast, there are forecast options. So when we click on the forecast option, you will see the first section is the forecast length. So forecast length sets how far into the future the forecast will extend. We could make it exactly 12 months, 6 months, 3 months, whichever we want. So in this case, uh, I will choose one year. You can also do it until one year or two years. You can adjust the way you want it here. But in this scenario, we will use exactly one year. 
Then the second section talks about the source data and it is quite useful because automatically it aggregates the data based on the selection. So in this case, it's automatically doing it by month. If you want to further drill it down to days or weeks, you can select it from here and get the data aggregated to that level. And also it has a handy option which lets us ignore the last aggregated selection. So in this case, we have selected month. So by default, it ignores the last one month. So what does it mean? So this is very good when a portion of relevant data is missing for that particular month. For example, if we are aggregating to month, but we are part way through the current month, we may want to trim the data uh, which is used in the forecast back to the last complete month. By default, Tableau ignores the last unit of aggregation. Either it can be month, year, week, or quarter. So that's the benefit of these options in source data section. Now moving on to the next section is the forecast model. So by default, forecast model can be automatic or automatic without seasonality or custom. So if we are not sure which one to use, we can leave it uh, everything up to Tableau and let it decide by selecting automatic. So if we select, let's say custom in this case, it will bring down two further options, which is trend and season, which can either be set to none or we can select a additive or multiplicative. And more details about these trends and selection can be um, seen or you can go to this particular option and you can see all these options here which talks about forecast length which i just mentioned the source data and the forecasting model so it talks about additive and multiplicative models so going back to the dashboard so if you want more details you can go and uh, have a look at these documentation which is provided by tableau so in this scenario i will simply select multiplicative and seasonality as multiplicative as well and you will see the trend on the right hand side it's showing us the forecast as well as the prediction interval so that prediction interval is this last option so that's quite useful because right now it is selected at 95 percent so the shaded area represents the range of values for the forecast within 95 percent confidence that is to say the statistical model thinks that only 5% change the future value will be outside this shaded area. The more precise our confidence, the wider the band will be. So if we change it into 99% and you will notice the band is expanded a bit. So that's how you can adjust these values and according to your need and most most people prefer to keep it at 95 percent but again it's um, uh, it's it's uh, it's dependent on an individual how you want to adjust the prediction intervals so once we click okay now let's move on to next section uh, which is describing the forecast if you don't find all the information here then you can simply right click and go to forecast and describe the forecast op option so before I go into that, uh, let's say I want to bring categories into row shelf and I want to see the forecast by categories. And you will see by furniture, office supply and technology, it's giving us the sales prediction for one year. And now I want to see the information for these categories uh, in addition to all this forecast. So I will simply right click and go to forecast and say describe forecast so what it will do is it will give us two tabs summary tab and model tab we can see the time series and measure used in the summary tab as you can see here time series and measure used how far the forecast goes and what date it is it was based on including what was ignored and if there is a seasonality pattern so in this case it's 12 month cycle 
We also get some additional information about measures specifically. So the table below is broken down by dimension in the view. So we can see here the dimension we brought in this scenario was category. And this table is broken down by dimension. And also we can see the contribution by trend and season. And also it shows us the quality, like how well the forecast fits the existing data. And also in the second tab, the Tableau talks about different models. So Tableau uses whole winter's exponential smoothing in this case by default. And this tab describes the quality metrics and smoothing coefficient used in the model. Again, Tableau will automatically evaluate the data and apply the appropriate model. There is no way to alter the smoothing constant used. For a complete explanation of the information found in the scribe forecast, please see the online help article by clicking on this link. So this link will talk about all the forecast description of the summary tab as well as for the model tab and it will give you all the explanation how all these values and the definitions are calculated. So please go through this documentation provided by Tableau if you want to get into more detail. So after this, I would like to talk about the constraints which I mentioned earlier that I will talk at the end of the session. So forecasting has some requirements. It needs at least one date or a dimension with integer value where we will be showing the measured value for a period of time. So basically a date is quite useful in the scenario where we are trying to predict the future uh, of a measure in the later time series. And we also need one measure, which is really important to, uh, on which we want to forecast. Sales, it can be sales, profit, revenues, any measure which you want to predict the future on. And we need at least five data points. And if the data is seasonal, we need at least two seasons worth of data. Forecasting also has some restrictions. Because of the nature of our forecasting model, forecasting cannot be done against a cube on a view containing table calculations, on total or subtotals, or on disaggregated measures or dimension. So these are the few constraints and restrictions uh, on forecasting in Tableau. I hope you guys enjoyed this introduction session on forecasting in Tableau. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to me or um, share some comment in the section below. Thank you. See you next time.